Most of the people say that you can't really build production ready apps with AI. So I decided to dig deep and find out the real reason why. Turns out the problem does not lie in the AI coding agent, but the way we are using it. So even if you give the solid PRD, explain all the features and give the AI coding agent the perfect prompt, still the app ends up with bugs, missing features or broken flows. That's because most of the people skip one very crucial step and that is testing. And in this video, I will show you how adding this one step can make your AI workflow way more accurate. So we'll be using Cursor for building the application and then run it through real-world test cases using TestSprite NCP, which will automatically run full backend and frontend test on our behalf. And we will actually take our AI app from demo to production. So we are going to build a flashcard learning web app called LinguaFlip, which would let user learn any language of their choice using flashcards. And they would also be able to track their learning progress. So let's get started. So I already created a new folder called LinguaFlip and that I've opened up with cursor now i'm going to ask cursor to create a prd for this particular project so first i'll create a new folder called docs within it we'll create a new file called prd.md then i'm going to take help of cursor to create the prd for this particular project okay so i'm just giving it a prompt that i want to build a flashcard learning app and i want separate folders for front end and back end so that i can test them with test sprite separately write a prd at the location at this point Okay, so the PRD is created. Now we will ask Cursor to build the entire application. So we'll give the prompt, create the application now. And since I have YOLO mode on, I don't have to worry about anything. I'll just leave it on Cursor. Okay, so finally Cursor is done building everything. Now let's ask it to run the application. Okay, so this is what Cursor has built. From a UI perspective, it looks good. Uh, we have two options here, start learning for free and watch a demo. Apart from this, uh, it has also given some more information about the application. Along with that, there are some testimonials as well. Now let's try out the application. So if I click on start learning for free, it takes me to this page where I first need to create an account. Okay, so the account is created. Now we can see there are multiple things like current streak, card study, daily goal and best streak. Uh, there are some recent decks as well. Uh, let's see if we can access it. So if I click on study, nothing is working. So I think this part is broken. Along with that, if I click on say view progress, it is taking me to a progress link, but the link is not really functional. So, so Cursor has built the application, but most of it is broken. Some of it is not functional and some of the features it has not built properly. And if we sit through and start testing out the application, uh, telling it everything that this is not working, view progress is not working, it will take a lot of time and still we will miss some minor details. So that's why building is only half of the work and rest of it is testing. And that's where Test Pride comes in. So Test Pride is the easiest AI agent for software testing. It first reads the project PRD, understand what the app is supposed to do. Then it spins up a cloud testing environment and runs full front-end and back-end test, checking every UI, API and edge cases. And if it finds something to be broken or missing, it gives pinpoint feedback and even suggests fixes. And we can have the option to give it directly to the AI coding agent that we are using, for example, cursor in our case, so that it can auto repair the code. And the best part is this is fully automated. Let me quickly show you through a diagram how it actually works. So as you can see, the user provides the PRD docs to TestSprite and then the TestSprite MCP actually starts working, wherein it first creates its standard PRD doc based on the PRD that you have provided. And then it creates the overall test plan test the code and then gives the test result which we can give to the MCP client for example cursor, windsurf, cloud code or any other and then we can ask the MCP client to work on the errors that TestSprite has found out and that's how the overall cycle looks like. So in order to get started with TestSprite there are three simple steps. We have to create an account, get the API key, install the MCP server in cursor and that's all. So let's quickly implement all of this and see what TestSprite actually catches. Let's first create a new account. For that, I'll click on sign in. Here it gives the option to log in with Google, with GitHub or we can create a separate email ID and password. So I already have created an account. Let me quickly log into that. So we have successfully logged in. We are getting a one month free trial. You can get it as well. I'll give the TestSprite link in the description. Now the second step is to get the API key. First, we need to create a new API key. I'll name it lingua flip underscore cursor 
and I'll simply copy this one. The next step is to install the TestBright MCB server. For that, we have a direct option as well. If you click on add to cursor, and it will op automatically open up cursor will ask for the api key that we have just copied i'll provide it and click on install and this will install the test sprite mcp server so now we have a new chat opened up here we will ask cursor to test the front end of our application using test sprite so can you test this project i'll just drag and drop the front end using test sprite similarly you can ask test sprite to test the back end as well Okay, now it has taken me to this screen where it is asking for some test configuration. It has automatically chosen the mode as frontend and the scope as code base. For testing, it also requires some account information that we have just created. The port is fine. We also need to provide the product specification doc. Within the docs, I have this file and I'll click on continue. Test Sprite has started working. Okay, so it has created the code summary first. So if you go within the frontend folder, here it has created a new folder called test sprite underscore test where it has put the prd file that we uploaded apart from this it has also created a code summary file now if the an overall analysis looks good to us we can ask it to proceed with testing now it will execute all the tests that are there so overall it has written 18 tests out of which we will get to know how many have passed how many have failed now, if we even go to the dashboard within the MCP test, you can see these are some of the things that is it is going to test. For example, user registration with valid data, with invalid data, etc. And here the status would be updated. Okay, so the testing is complete. Out of the 18 tests that Test Sprite wrote, only three tests passed and 15 tests failed. Uh, we can have a complete report either from the dashboard also. Here there are two files that have been generated. One is this test sprite MCP test report and second one in a HTML format. So let's open it in a HTML format and see what are some of the issues. So the first test is about user registration with a valid data which is failing because there was a button on the form submission page which led the user to a 404 error page. You don't even have to try it on your own. If you go within the dashboard, uh, within this MCP test, we also have a video of what it was able to capture and where the error was actually being encountered. So if I play this video, uh, it tried to register and if it clicked on uh, this privacy policy it is taking it to a 404 page that's why this test did not pass and similarly there are many others which are failing now what we are going to do is we are going to give this particular report to cursor and let's see what all it is able to improve so here uh, i'll just provide this particular md file and i'll ask it to resolve all the errors which are leading to test failure. Now you can see cursor has write a list of to do's of all the things it needs to do for resolving all those errors that test sprite has found out. So cursor has worked on all of the critical issues. For example, it has created the missing pages. It has also created some additional pages like terms and forgot password. Apart from this, uh, it has also improved the authentication system wherein guest mode is also activated. Image reloading has been also fixed. So these are some of the things that have been fixed. Now let's quickly run the app and see if the errors that we saw earlier are fixed or not. Now if I click on get started, this button was earlier not functional. Now if I click on privacy policy, this is no longer taking me to 404 and this is working fine. Uh, similarly, if I click on sign in and click on this continue as guest, so the guest mode is activated now. You can see the power of test, right? How testing our application actually gave us an overall picture of what were some of the things that were working, what are some of the things that are not working. And it also ensures that we are not missing on minor details. There is one thing that I want to highlight. Uh, even when you wipe code also, testing is not really a one-time thing. Uh, whenever you ship a new feature or make any change, make sure that you rerun all the tests that you have written so that nothing breaks. So this is how you can really take your app from demo to production by making just one addition to your AI workflow and that is testing. So this kind of workflow don't just save time but also gives you the confidence that whatever you are building actually works and will not break in production. So if you find this video helpful do hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more such AI videos in future. See you in the next one.